we, we got our next guest here on the line. Uh, definitely a real privilege of uh, bringing on one of the pound for pound best fighters of this era. Uh, you know, one of one of you know the 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 classiest guys that ever stepped inside the ring. And you know, in his last fight, he went out on top, even in a losing battle, because he did fight for another world title. So without further ado. I see in the United States who can't speak Espanol. We call him Iron Boy. And uh, I have yeah. Elliot, I have, I have a chance to say his nickname in Spanish. I don't want to butcher it. My dialect's no good. But without further ado, man, Mr. Ivan Calderon, welcome to ATG Radio. It's a pleasure to have you on here today. How's it going, man? I'm all right, man. Thanks to all and, and everything to be attention in my career. Yeah, I tell you like this, man. You're one, of, you're one of the stars in Puerto Rico, you know, in the history, and I mean, there's not too many of them, and you you go down as one of them. Uh, you know, I've, I've used to have uh, many discussions. Actually, another one of our show uh, members who's not here right now, Eddie Gonzalez, he says, you know, he puts you on the same skill level as Floyd Mayweather, and I know a lot of people agree because of the, you know, you being a southpaw, him not. But I mean, what do you think about that that claim in your in your career? I mean, the dominance you had in in almost 40 fights. Uh, all those defenses, all that time as champion. I mean, how do you, how do you accept that claim as being uh, something like Floyd Mayweather? I feel real glad to to know that somebody see the the talent that I had in my in my career when I was active, uh, when I was active and and when I was fighting and in my weight that I'm, I'm everybody know I'm not a puncher, I'm not a knockout person, but I got a good style. A good defense, and a, a few people didn't like that. But a lot of people that know about boxing, like your friend right there, that he knows really about boxing, that it's hit and don't get hit. They give me that, 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 that why, what that means that he thinks he, I want to Mayweather. And one time Mayweather say for him, I was one of the best fighters in Puerto Rico. When when I saw him the first time that I saw him, he say, I believe you're one of the best fighters that I know of Puerto Rico that move and don't get hit. I got to ask you this. I mean, we got a bunch of people here, man, excited to talk to you. Um, you know, you, you, I mentioned like this, even in a losing battle in your last fight, you know, you went out on top, you announced your retirement. I mean, really, is is a retirement going to stick? I mean, you're one of the most exciting fighters, one of the most highly decorated in boxing, not just coming out of Puerto Rico. I mean, does it stick? I mean, you, your last fight being for a world title, do you still, even though it was about a month ago, do you still have the urge? Is there anything coming back saying, ah, you know what, I'll take a year off, maybe I'll come back in one year? Or is it done? Are you finished? Uh, for real, right now, uh, I say I was done because I'm uh, doing this because I want to do an, uh, uh, other things like be training and they they like they give me another position in my job, like uh, uh, take care of a, of a gym. And I say I got the experience to be a good trainer, take another boxer like like me, like I came to my trainer and try to make him a world champion and win me money with him and don't get him and don't gotta go in the ring and and take some good punishment to to win my myself money. So I believe I'm gonna give me at least one year to give me a chance to 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 take care of the good of the new gym and to see what kind of boxes come and what kind of prospect I could come and take out like a pro. If nothing goes on, I'm gonna just give it one more year. And right now, if tomorrow they call me and they say, right now it's Brian Below that he want to fight with you 112, and it's good and it's a good fight for world title, I will go up to 112, train myself like I did with Hugo Casares, and believe me, I will go up in the ring and fight uh, Brian Below. That's what I like to hear. That's a, that's why you're you know that's why you're the one one of the best fighters uh, to, to ever step foot in the ring, man. That's and it, I'll never leave you. I think. Yvonne, I think when you get to 60 years old, you're, you're still, because you have it in you, is you've been doing this for, for so long and, you know, so successful, and I think just you being a natural-born fighter. And, you know, God bless you, man. It's definitely uh, something a big fan like myself uh, likes to hear. You know, I, don't, I, hate, I hate to see the great fighters right out and just ride out into the sunset. I'd rather see you fight as long as you could, man, but uh, that's, that's some good stuff to hear. Yeah, it's like you know, uh, God gave me an opportunity to try to do another things in my in my life. But if 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 tomorrow they they call me to give me a good opportunity, a good fight, and to and then I know I could win that fight, or I could I got a good opportunity to be a world champion in that weight. 
and and be back where I was, I would take the fight, I would take back the the challenge, and I tell the people, remember my my retirement, it was no more that I didn't want to do it in my heart. I just want to do other things, and I just want to know how it's going to feel being at least two or four or five months to see if I could be out of the boxing and don't go back in the gym and train to to go for another fight. So I believe I've been seeing people 36 years old with Indio Quintana, Hawthorne, and people my age, but not Hawking, they, they're still fighting. I say, man, I, I could still be in the ring doing good fights. I, I, I haven't get good punches. I haven't get knocked out. And I, I still could do a good action and, and try to be a world champion again. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, Ivan, how you doing? This is Ellie Vasquez. Uh, how you doing? Hey, uh, by the way, uh, Iron Boy in, in Spanish is El Niño de Viejo. I know El Niño de Viejo. Yeah. El Niño. Yeah, I couldn't get the H1. I, El Niño de Viejo. I see. El Niño de, de, de Hierro. De Hierro. Yeah, yeah, yellow. The yellow. Okay, there we go. Uh, there yeah, we go. I think I got it. Yeah. Hey, Ivan, I want to talk about your title defenses. I mean, you, you've had, uh, I think, was it 16, maybe 17? 18. 18. 18 without a loss. I mean, talk to us yeah. about that, you know, and you also was the, I believe you were the first, I, actually the only Puerto Rican fighter to win the ring magazine. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Talk, talk to us, you know, go go over those 18 defenses with us. I mean, how, how, what it takes for you to defend all those, you know, all those ch- uh, titles and, and the fighters, all, all, you know, throughout the years? You know, right now, right now, now I feel, I look back and I say, damn, I didn't even knew that I had 18 hmm. defenses. I didn't even feel that it was so fast. Every time I fought for the title defense, I didn't even have the numbers. And one day they told me, you know, you already got 16 defenses. I said, for real? I didn't even knew all my defense that I had. And when they told me, you, right now you got the record, you, know, I, you took it out of Tito and Gomez, uh, yeah. That I, and my, my company, uh, Peter Promotion, did a good job with me, and especially in my, in my weight class. It was hard to get fights. And, and, and like in my age, I say, let's go on, forget the records of the people, and I don't care if they got more experience than me. I got experience and amateurs. I just need to fight uh, before I get old. And they just kept on putting fights, and I was just, I used to come out of the fight with no, with no, uh, when no, my body all good, and I say, all right, next month let's fight again. And I kept on doing that and put serious in my career, and I did all those fights and all those defense, and I didn't even knew I did all those defense. Wow, amazing. <laughs> hey, hey, Ivan, how you doing, Mark Adams? A um, couple, couple quick questions. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to. Uh, Broadcast both the Valoria fight and the Ivan Cal- and the uh, excuse me and the Roman Gonzalez fight. Hey, did you have a chance to see them? Uh, what did you think of that? And also, what did you think? There's a lot of good publicity this week in about the 108, 112 pound divisions. Uh, that make you smile a little bit to see all the articles written about the lower weight classes. Yeah, yeah, it's something that that I had that problem with. when I was there. Nobody, there was not a lot of names. And now that I came out, it's a few names, Chocolate, uh, Brian Bilodeo and one troll. Chocolate is going to one 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 troll maybe and the one oh five going to one oh eight, you know, there there's now there's some few names that I could say I could do a good fight and with boxes that I know I could I could outbox them and I could beat them. What did you think of the fights? I think they were both uh, great fights. Were you able to see them? I didn't get I didn't get to see at least uh, Brian Belodia and my kids fight, but I heard about it. They, they told me they dropped them I think like two or three times. But I know Brian Belodia got a straight right hand, a hard right hand, an amateur. He called me with a good right hand when we fought, and I knew he had a strong fight. And I thought if he gets tired, he was gonna lose the fight. But I believe my kids uh, went too down a weight because I believe he couldn't do. What, he used to couldn't do not even one twelve, but he did one ten. So I believe they they worked him too much, and he went down too much, and he was like weak in that fight for me. I didn't saw the fight, but I could. What I what I wrote, what I what I what I heard, I believe he was like weak in that weight. Also, one one last question. Uh, I know you're very close to Miguel Cotto. Uh, talk about your relationship with Miguel and uh, what do you think of his fight with the Austin Trout coming up. Ah uh, well, when we were we was 
partners and, and amateur, we fought together when we was, he was like 12 years old, I was like 17, and I beat him like 3-2. But we were starting our career, and then we made we, we got a real close friend in 97. We went to a Central American game, Pan American and Olympics. And from there on, we kept on uh, like like – like brothers and the and the pro, and then that's where we we all took each one to, uh, divide our, our career. He started working with where with other people and me with other with not another, but we still see each other. We still we still we we still friends. And about the fight he's gonna have uh, at the December first, I really can't talk about that that fight because I haven't seen Trier fight before. So I believe it's gonna maybe be a hard fight because I believe he's a good boxer, at Southpaw, uh, and I know Miguel Cotto is trained hard, but always Cotto have a little bit of problem with Southpaw, especially with people that move a lot. But I believe he's trained real hard. He got faith in himself, and he's he's every time he he goes more stronger to the fight, and he's he's in another level, you know. That with that fight with Mayweather, he feel like he's in another level, and I think that's gonna happen in this fight. Thanks, man. Yeah, Ivan, this is... Uh... Hello? <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> What's up, Ivan? Uh, who are some of your favorite fighters coming up? Coming up right now, Pro? No, when you were coming up. Who, uh, who did you look at and, and see something about them that that you could possibly uh, reach reach their level? Especially uh, Alice and, and Tito, his personality that he was uh, with the people and especially his power. Nice style of boxing, but he had a good he got a good power hand and a good hook and he's he he always trained real hard for his fights. And and De La Hoya because he maybe was not a good puncher but he was a good boxer and he was real intelligent in the in the ring. And and for me my favorite he kept on being um Mayweather because he's somebody that he goes up there, he, he fights like he wants, and he dominates all around how he, how he feels like. Who did you root for when Mayweather fought Cotto? You had a root what? for Cotto. <laughs> no, no, right. for real. When when that when that fought, when that fight came, I, right here in Puerto Rico, I said mm-hmm. it to, I told everybody that Cotto was gonna lose that fight. He was gonna he was gonna do a good fight, but he was gonna lose. And 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 then I and I told everybody it's not because he's not. I'm, I'm Puerto Rican also, but I gotta be. I gotta talk real. <laughs> I gotta say the truth because I know people know about boxing. I can't talk lie to the people that I really know. But I tell them, Miguel's gonna do a good fight, but he's not gonna win the fight. But he's gonna do a good fight. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad to know that uh, you're thinking about coming back. Maybe, it, hopefully, it, it happens. What, what do you think of Brian Valoria? He's, he's also. Came up like you. He's a great amateur, and he's still going strong now. Just knocked out Tyson Marquez. What do you see in Brian Valoria that that makes you want to fight him? I didn't know because remember we always wanted to fight each other when we were there uh, and pro. It was always we was ready to fall like twice, two times, but every time that we, the fight was already already like going to be true, he lose. His, he, he lost his 108 pounds, then I had it away. Then when he went back and won the the bill in 108, we we say, well, we're gonna fight with him. Some and we already had the date and everything, and he lost again against the Colombian guy. That's why he decided to go up to one throw. That's why we say, all right, he left. He left the way. We can't fight him now. So we, we were gonna fight him. So we always wanted to be that fight because we knew he was gonna have a good a good. A girl fighting here in Puerto Rico or in Hawaii. We're gonna fight in Hawaii. I remember, and the fight just saw when he lost the fight. Yeah, one of the, one of the fights that I always wish we could have saw was you and Ricardo Lopez fighting. Ah, even me, even me. <laughs> How would that fight? Have been? Remember, I, I would, the only the only time that I saw Finito Lopez when when he beat the Puerto Rican guy Nene Sanchez. That was the only time I saw him fight. I never saw him fight before. I, I would not even. I didn't even like to see boxing, and that was the only time I lost. That I saw him, and he got the same style of my kids, the my kids uh, team. And he fight real, real side, real sideways. He got a good uppercut. Tall people, a uh, tall, tall person. He got a good. He got a good hand strength. You know, it was gonna be a. It was gonna be a good fight with me and him. Yeah, and you and. 
Lopez are two of the all-time greats, but the shame is that lots of people don't care about little guys like you. And to watch I don't you know guys. why, man. We do the best fights. We do the f- best fight. I, I, I make, I, sometimes I see them heavyweights and respecting them. I get, I, I even get boring when I see them fight. I was like, I can't believe they get more money than we do. And look at that kind of fight they do. It's not fair. And you, I think you're a first ballot Hall of Famer. How important is it to you to get that recognition? And will that help? And will that help you get over not getting so much attention in your career during the early part, especially? Yeah, you, you know, at least they didn't get the attention in boxing for the people at HBO, for them in Puerto Rico, or people like yeah, I got the attention that yeah, at least just say. I like that kid. He's a one of five, and he's not a puncher, but he got a good boxing. And I see a lot of people like Mayweather that he they they like the way I fight. You know, with that I feel great. I don't need the people, the HBO, that say ah we we need to see those small way in this fight. I just believe that my people, my my Puerto Rican fans and and all the fans that I got uh, always see me every time I fight in Puerto Rico or out of out of Puerto Rico. Yeah, I, I wanted to talk about Puerto Rico a little. Do you do you think that they're trying to rush their their next level, their next era of talent, kind of, and, and how they brought Juanma along, and you saw what happened to him against Orlando Orlando Salido, and then you see what happened with Orlando Delval and and Thomas Delorme. They're just put in kind of two green one against. Do you think people are trying to rush Ivan Calderon or Tito Trinidad? Yeah, you know, they, they just yeah. I think they they like they feel like we need a we need a star right now, and they just trying to put them real up in that in that level. And it's too they too young for that level. At least uh, Dorone or the Orlando, they could away and do a good career and and way or two good experience to go up for the title fight. You know, they they put them too fast with people that they thought that they was over already because they was too old, but they got the experience and they got the power in their hands, and that's what happened in this fight. Yeah, you mentioned how you're working. What do you do for work, could I ask? What I, wanna, what I do of work? You work now, you said. You have a job. Yeah, well, I've I, I been, I been working since I was pro. Since I turned pro, I always work myself. I always work in the gym where I train at and work now like a trainer. Oh, okay. I, I've yeah. already got 12 years working here in the gym. You know, right now, like I'm not training right now, so I'm giving more, 100% more to attention to the kids. But I used to always be in the gym and I always work myself since I got out of garbage can. I used to work in the garbage can for five years. Then I went, I left that turn pro, and then I start working here in the gym. And I'm always work myself. You know, I'm always a worker. You thinking about promoting? Last question. Sorry. Nah, believe me, I, I I know all about promoting. I know all about how you lose money, and I just leave that to to Bob Adam, Peter Rivera, and all the people. If they need my help to look for for stars, I could help them with that, but not promoting. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lose my money in that. <laughs> Smart man. Thank you, Evan. Appreciate you and your whole career. Thank you, man. All right, man. Thanks. Rufus. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Calderon, I only have one question. I know you're pressed for time, but uh, you alluded to the fact that if an offer came, you'd fight at 112. I've been looking at your career, you know, and you've went back and forth between light flyweight and minimum weight. Have you ever had problems with uh, weight or anything like that? No, 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 and I and I mentioned right now I mentioned one twelve because right now that's the name Brian Bilotti. I believe that's the payment right now in the small weight. But uh, if it was if it's uh, somebody in one o five or one o eight, I stayed in that in that way because that's my my normal weight. Right now I don't do. Uh, right now I have like a a month and like one week that I I don't do nothing. Right now I'm in one hundred and fifteen pounds, uh, eating everything, so I don't got problem with my weight. I just mentioned 112 because that's the name right now. But uh, if somebody's in 108, like Chocolate, but Chocolate is, is a guy that he got a good record, 33 and something knockouts, but he's he's not respecting himself. Right now in Puerto Rico and some and some other places, he's nobody because nobody haven't seen him. Right now, he's he's right now coming out, and people are seeing him right now. But not like Brian Villoria that everybody know Olympics, that he's the payman right now. But do, do you think you would have the strength, you know, to be able to fight yeah. at 112? No, I don't got the strength. 
like I didn't have it in 108, I don't have it in 105, but I got the quickness, the movement that I could that I could dominate them the 112 that comes that have the strength. And I could go remember my career I've been fighting one or twelve, one or eight, but I've been fighting people that they really want twelve, one fourteen, one fifty, like oh god they just suffer to go one to one oh eight. But and for real, they want twelve, one fifteen and one eighteen up all the way up there. Well thank you, champion, for your time and Jesus bless you. Thanks. Final question, Yvonne, final question, man, and I got to ask this. I ask this everybody from the island, right? And Elliot will tell you the same thing. I think first time, you know, we had this discussion. From where I'm from, the city where I'm from, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, we got the number one 140-pounder in in boxing and Danny Garcia, uh, you know, unified champion in that case. You being born, raised, bred, trained, all that stuff in Puerto Rico, you know, he's Puerto Rican, his his family, I, I believe his grandparents came from the island. But do you consider, you know, he, he goes around now waving the flag. I don't even think he speaks the language. <laughs> you know, do you consider him, you know, oh, he's Puerto Rican, obviously, in his, uh, his blood. He's so got the blood. Do you consider him a real Puerto Rican? No, no, to respect myself to him. No, he's a Philippine. I mean, a Philadelphia guy. He, and, but I respect him because his family, his his mother, and everybody is Puerto Rican. So he only got the blood, and I like because he got he feels the 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 flag. He always represent a, a Puerto Rican guy. But for real, he's from USA. He's from USA. But I'm glad that he still he want to represent Puerto Rico. But right here, I tell the commissioner, I say like, why y'all gonna put us under him? That he that we the real Puerto Rican guys that we came from all the way from Puerto Rico. We trained here. We was born here. So, so why are you going to put people in front of us that live in Philadelphia, New York, just because they want to build now they the best and they now they're Puerto Rican? No, they got always, they got to be Puerto Rican. I, I agree. Because, you know, I say that, I, I say the same thing you say. He's a Philadelphia fighter. Because anybody, listen, you know, you get an Irishman can put a, uh, um, a Puerto Rican flag and still represent the island. It it just doesn't you know, it just don't make sense. Hey Yvonne, I appreciate it, man. You um I gotta ask that question and definitely shout out to Elliot for um you know for his island connections, bro. Uh we'd love to get you back on the show, man. I'm I'm glad you dropped it that there is some potential that you'll be fighting uh once again. Um, you know, if, if whether you do or you don't, you're definitely first ballot Hall of Famer. And, you know, thank you for obviously sitting here and talking with us today. And thank you for all the great fights, man, that you've given us as boxing fans, man. You know, you're definitely appreciated. And for, you know, a, a big fan and enthusiast like myself to get an opportunity to talk to one of the best that have ever laced them up, you know, it's a blessing, man. So, you know, I wish you all the best in the post career. And, you know, maybe you breathe a, a, a new Yvonne Calderon uh, for us to see on television in the future. You know, and, and thanks to all of you, all the people that talked to me that gave me the good question pro questions and in order in order to support me and the the best of all this that I always talk the truth. I don't care what people say, I gotta say what I gotta say, I gotta just, just say it on his face. This is what I feel and this is what I say and this is what I mean. So I I thank all of you to always back myself and and when I come back I I wish I still had the the response that y'all was giving me in my career. We will. We'll, we'll, we'll second when you do come back, man. It's gonna be. It's gonna be event. One more thing, man. Do you, is there anywhere we can follow you on Twitter? Uh, I, I, for you, I don't got a Twitter, no Facebook. I want my life. A marry be cool. No problems. You go always find me on my telephone. That's it. <laughs> you know what? You ain't the first. You ain't the 